Imagine this. Two industrial titans locked in a century-long battle for dominance, their rivalry shaping everything from the boats cruising past your dock to the massive container ships crossing the Pacific. The Rise of Cummins tells the story of how a small Indiana engine shop grew to challenge the mighty Caterpillar Empire. Here's something that'll blow your mind. While most people think Caterpillar rules the marine engine world unchallenged, Cummins has quietly become a powerhouse in marine propulsion, with their engines powering everything from luxury yachts to commercial fishing fleets. But here's where it gets really interesting. Despite both companies' impressive marine portfolios, they've carved out surprisingly different niches in the market, creating a rivalry that's less head-to-head -head combat and more strategic chess match. With each company dominating specific segments while constantly probing for weaknesses in the other's territory. Back in 1919, while Caterpillar's predecessor companies were already established industrial players, Clessy Cummins was working as a chauffeur for banker William Irwin in Columbus, Indiana. Now, Clessy wasn't your typical chauffeur. The man was obsessed with diesel engines at a time when most people thought they were only good for stationary applications. Talk about betting on the future. Clessy Cummins founded the Cummins Engine Company, Inc., now Cummins, Inc., with the assistance of banker William G. Irwin. The company initially licensed technology from R.M. Havid Company, but by 1924, Cummins had developed his own Model F engine using his patented direct injection design from 1921. The early days were all about proving diesel could work in vehicles. In 1929, Clessy pulled off a publicity stunt that would make today's marketers jealous. He secured a Packard limousine and fitted one of his best engines into it with three-eighths of an inch to spare. He and an assistant drove the vehicle to the 1929 auto show in New York City using just $1.39 worth of diesel fuel. When they arrived, they'd been banned from the show for not registering, so Cummins rented space across the street. The $1.39 for fuel Indy to NYC display became more popular than many official exhibits. Meanwhile, Caterpillar entered the marine market much later, but with considerable resources. In 1938, three new models were added to the Caterpillar diesel engine line. They were the D11000, the D13000, and the D17000. These engines were specifically designed for marine use from the ground up, producing between 80 and 135 horsepower. The marine connection for Cummins came through an interesting route. During the 1920s, many of the company's engines were used in yachts, a market that vanished during the Great Depression of the 1930s. But the company's persistence in developing reliable diesel engines would pay off decades later, when the recreational boating market exploded. If you're enjoying this deep dive into marine engine history, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Because coming up, I'm going to reveal how both companies carved out their own kingdoms in the marine world and the real story behind the biggest emission scandal in diesel history. Trust me, you won't want to miss what happened when the EPA got involved. The real competition in marine engines began to heat up in the 1960s and 70s, but not in the way you might expect. Rather than going head-to-head -head in every market segment, Cummins and Caterpillar began carving out their own territories. Caterpillar leveraged its experience with large industrial engines to focus on high-horsepower commercial applications. These engines were medium-speed, medium-weight engines designed and rated for continuous duty. They were ideal for work vessels, including ferry boats, tugboats, towboats, and fishing trawlers, as well as cargo and dispatch vessels. Cummins, on the other hand, saw opportunity in the growing recreational market. The introduction of the B-Series engines in the 1980s changed everything. Arguably the most famous engine Cummins debuted in the second half century was the B5.9 in 1984. This engine would become legendary in marine applications. The genius of Cummins' strategy became clear when Dodge's 1987 decision to install it in the DW series that really got it going. Dodge wanted it for its toughness, durability, and fuel economy, and initially thought they would need 20,000 engines a year. 
That quickly proved an understatement. Only 14 years later, Dodge Ram had used a million of them. This automotive success translated directly to marine applications. Boat builders recognized that an engine proven in millions of trucks would be reliable on the water. The QSB 5.9 and later QSB 6.7 became the go-to choice for recreational vessels from 35 to 60 feet. Let's talk about the heavy hitters in each company's lineup, because these engines represent decades of engineering evolution and fierce competition. The Cummins QSB 6.7 is arguably the most successful recreational marine diesel ever built. Engine design, unmatched performance driven through a perfectly matched turbocharger, and a new 24-valve cylinder head that delivers industry-leading power density. With power ratings from 230 to 550 horsepower, this engine hits the sweet spot for most recreational vessels. What makes the QSB 6.7 special? Fuel system. Bosch HPCR with hardened components to safely operate alternative fuels such as kerosene and GP8, GP5. Quiet operation, including an 80% reduction in noise at idle. That high-pressure common rail system operates at up to 30,000 PSI, delivering precise fuel injection that results in better fuel economy and lower emissions. On the Caterpillar side, the C32 Acert is an absolute beast. The 7,000-pound V12 has a bore of 5.71 inches and a stroke of 6.38 inches, which brings displacement to 1,959 cubic inches. The twin-turboed engine makes 1,925 horsepower at 2,300 rpm. That's nearly one horsepower per cubic inch. The C32 uses Caterpillar's ACERT, Advanced Combustion Emission Reduction Technology, to meet emission standards while maintaining performance. According to Caterpillar, the engine has a mechanically actuated, electronically controlled unit injector fuel system. This system offers a special variable injection timing that boosts combustion at every variety of speed and loading levels. But here's what really separates these engines. Application Philosophy Cummins focuses on efficiency and ease of maintenance. The QSB series uses spin-on filters and has service points accessible from one side of the engine. Most marine mechanics can work on them with standard tools. Caterpillar's approach is different. Their engines are built for maximum power and durability in commercial applications. The C32 has several ratings with wide operating speed range, WOSR, and extended oil change intervals. This means operators can run these engines hard across a broad RPM range without worry. Now for the part that made headlines worldwide. While the marine divisions of both companies have worked hard to meet emission standards, the automotive side of Cummins faced a massive scandal that sent shockwaves through the diesel industry. In 2024, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and the U.S. Department of Justice, along with the state of California, reached a settlement agreement with Cummins Inc. for vehicle emission control violations under the Clean Air Act. The scale was staggering. Cummins equipped 630,000 model year 2013 to 2019 vehicles with illegal software defeat devices that reduce the effectiveness of the emission control system during normal driving conditions. The financial impact? Cummins agreed to pay $1.642 billion as a civil penalty for violations of the Clean Air Act. This made it the largest Clean Air Act penalty in history. But here's the important part for marine enthusiasts. This scandal involved track engines, not marine engines. However, it highlighted the increasing scrutiny all diesel manufacturers face regarding emissions. Both Cummins and Caterpillar marine divisions have invested heavily in meeting EPA Tier 3, 4 and IMO emission standards for their marine engines. It's worth noting this wasn't the first time diesel manufacturers faced emissions violations. Back in 1998, the Department of Justice and the Environmental Protection Agency announced an $83.4 million total penalty against diesel manufacturers, the largest civil penalty ever for violation of environmental law. Both Cummins and Caterpillar were among the seven manufacturers involved in that case.
Before we dive into some major controversies and what's happening today, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We're covering everything from marine engines to the latest in boating technology. Today, both companies have evolved far beyond their origins. With sophisticated electronic control systems and emissions technology that would have seemed like science fiction to their founders, Cummins has embraced electronic integration with their SmartCraft system. Electronics 24-volt quantum system electronics feature a proven ECM to monitor operating parameters such as fuel consumption, duty cycle, engine load, and speed, while providing diagnostics, prognostics, and complete engine protection. The company's marine lineup now ranges from the compact QSB 4.5 producing 160 horsepower all the way up to the QSK95, capable of producing 5,000 horsepower. The QSK95 is the first production introduction in 20 years for the Seymour engine plant. Caterpillar has taken a different approach, particularly with their acquisition of Mack engines. Since 1997, Mack has been the leading provider of premium marine engines and generator sets for customers in the cruise, ferry, cargo, inland waterway, offshore, tug and salvage, fishing, governmental, and dredge segments. This gives Caterpillar coverage from 280 horsepower recreational engines, all the way up to massive 22,500 horsepower commercial engines. Both companies are also preparing for the future of marine propulsion. Alternative fuels and hybrid systems are becoming increasingly important. From biofuels to methanol and electrification, we offer the right mix to meet your needs today and in the future. Caterpillar is developing methanol-capable engines and electric propulsion systems. Cummins isn't sitting still either. Surging ahead of Tesla, Cummins unveils EOS, a fully electrified heavy-duty truck. While this was a truck application, the technology is being adapted for marine use, with hybrid marine systems already in development. So where does this leave us today? The marine engine market has essentially evolved into a fascinating landscape where each company has found its sweet spot, almost like they've carved up the ocean between them. If you walk through any marina in America, you'll notice something interesting. Those beautiful trawlers and motor yachts in the 30 to 60 foot range. Listen closely and you'll hear the distinctive rumble of Cummins QSB engines from most of them. Cummins has absolutely dominated the recreational market, and it's not hard to see why. They've become the go-to choice for light commercial fishing boats, displacement cruisers, and small passenger vessels. The numbers back this up too, demonstrating its long history of powering the recreational vehicle RV market. Cummins shipped its one millionth RV generator set in October of 1995. That incredible success in RV generators translated directly into marine generator sets, giving them a massive advantage in understanding what recreational boaters really need. Caterpillar, on the other hand, plays a completely different game. They're the undisputed kings of big iron. When you need serious horsepower for commercial applications, CAT is often your only real choice. We're talking about tugboats that can handle super tankers, massive offshore support vessels, those jaw-dropping super yachts over a hundred feet, and cargo ships that keep global commerce moving. Caterpillar marine diesel engines offer a wide range of power, with models delivering anywhere from 280 to 22,529 bhp. When you need to push a 200-foot yacht at 30 knots through heavy seas, that kind of power range makes all the difference. What's really fascinating is how this market division happened naturally over time. It wasn't some backroom deal or corporate strategy. It's just where each company's strengths led them. Cummins focused on what worked in their automotive applications and adapted it brilliantly for marine use, while Caterpillar leveraged their industrial engine expertise to dominate the heavy-duty market, where their premium pricing is justified by unmatched performance and durability. The rivalry between Cummins and Caterpillar is entering a new phase focused on environmental compliance and alternative fuels. EPA, the United States Environmental Protection Agency, regulates exhaust emissions from diesel engines installed on U.S.-flagged, registered marine vessels. 
Engines greater than or equal to 600 kilowatt, 805 horsepower must be EPA Tier 4, while engines with lower power are EPA Tier 3. Both companies are investing heavily in meeting these standards while maintaining the performance boat owners expect. The development of dual fuel engines that can run on diesel or natural gas, hybrid electric systems, and even pure electric propulsion for certain applications shows how the rivalry is pushing innovation. The competition has also driven improvements in serviceability and diagnostics. Modern engines from both manufacturers feature sophisticated electronic control systems that can diagnose problems before they cause failures. Remote monitoring capabilities allow technicians to troubleshoot issues while boats are still at sea. The rise of Cummins from a small Indiana workshop to Caterpillar's biggest rival in marine engines is more than just a business success story. It's a testament to how competition drives innovation. These two companies have pushed each other to produce better, cleaner, more efficient engines for over a century. Whether your team Cummins or team Caterpillar often depends on your specific needs. For the recreational boater looking for reliability, efficiency, and widespread service support, Cummins QSB engines are hard to beat. For commercial operators needing maximum power and durability, Caterpillar's offerings are often the only choice. The real winner? Boat owners and operators who benefit from continuous innovation, competitive pricing, and engines that are more reliable and efficient than ever before. As both companies invest in electric and alternative fuel technologies, this rivalry will shape the future of marine propulsion for decades to come. The story of Cummins and Caterpillar proves that in business, as in boating, a rising tide really does lift all boats. Their competition has created a marine engine market with options for every application, from the smallest pleasure craft to the largest container ships. If you enjoyed this deep dive into marine engine history and want more content like this, hit that subscribe button below and ring the notification bell. You won't want to miss the next video. Until then, keep your engines running smooth and your bilges dry. Thanks for watching.